Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we are jumping into a couple different beers, uh, but both of which are beers that I enjoy uh, on hot summer days. These are both uh, beer styles I would classify as perfect hot summer day beers. And though this video is going live in December, I record uh, my beer reviews well in advance so I don't get behind. It's actually the end of July here in Tampa, Florida, and it's very hot indeed. So I need something refreshing on this uh, hot summer day. So uh, that's exactly what I've got lined up. Uh, today we're gonna be starting with Gigantic Brewings, uh, another of their Hellboy series. This is the Johann Krauss Citrus Viet, uh, W-I-T Viet, we'll get into that in a minute. 6.66% uh, ABV as they all tend to be, it's intentional, uh, out of Portland, Oregon. And as always, it does have original uh, Mike Mignola artwork on the label. So I'm gonna try to get that up to the camera and angle it so that the set lights don't glare it out. Always really neat. Um, our second beer uh, of today, we're gonna be jumping into Westbrook Brewing's Beer to Drink When It's Hot Outside, which I find to be wholly apropos. Uh, this is an adjunct lager. It's uh, brewed with corn and key lime puree. Uh, four and a half percent ABV on this one out of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Uh, so without further ado, as it is hot and I am craving a beer to cool down, I'm going to get started here with the uh, gigantic Hellboy Johann Krauss Citrus Feet. All right, jump straight into our first beer of today's review. We've got Gigantic Brewing Company's Hellboy Johann Krauss Citrus Feet. 6.66% ABV out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, before I jump into the beer, um, the word is pronounced Viet. You, you may have heard it often mispronounced as Wit or even as Vit, assuming it's German. It's not German, it's actually Dutch. Uh, this is uh, Belgian style. And as uh, I went through, oh, two, three episodes ago uh, into a deep breakdown of the regions and languages of Belgium, uh, you will know that one of the three main languages spoken in Belgium is Dutch, and that's in the northmost region in the Flanders region uh, that borders the Netherlands. Um, so uh, they speak Dutch in the Netherlands as well. There's a lot of cross uh, language amongst Belgium. It's a very interesting country. Um, but uh, the word is wheat, and it means white, uh, often confused with wheat, um, which is uh, not what the word means. It's the color white in Dutch. Uh, wheat, um, people will often think it's German and mispronounced, but as we learned uh, from many Hefeweizen reviews and getting into some German language uh, info, uh, Weizen is the German word for wheat. This is not the Dutch word for wheat, it is the Dutch word for white. And people get confused because it is a wheat beer style, but it is pronounced wheat for the color white. Uh, nonetheless, let's get this poured into the glass. Oh yeah, that's a lovely looking beef. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Holding it up to the light, and it is a very prototypical Viet beer color. It is very light, straw yellow, golden color, um, and it's a little bit cloudy, as is common in wheat-based beers. Uh, formed ahead, um, I could have poured it more aggressively to get it a bigger one. They kind of run the gamut in, in the head formation. I expect this would have done just fine because it's quite effervescent, it's quite uh, tiny bubbles. Um, I just poured it poorly. Uh, so I won't hold that against it based on my own uh, lack of pouring expertise. Let's give this a sniff. Oh, that smells uh, quite lovely. This actually smells quite a bit different than your average Viet. Um, typically, they'll have maybe coriander, orange peel, something like that, and you get a lot of that aroma in the beer. I don't get that so much here, but I smell just a boatload of malt and really, really rich, delicious malt. Um, it smells very, very good. And it's not a sweet malty aroma. It's um, very similar to a Saison like we did in the last uh, episode, uh, beer review, or a Goza, a Berliner Weisse. There's many different styles that have that similar aroma. And it's the type of beers that typically are gonna have that lighter, 
more biscuity, toast, crumb, kind of baked good aroma and flavor about them, which is nice. It keeps the beer light and um, not, uh, not as heavy, which is great because I'm drinking this uh, to cool off on this hot July day. Mmm. 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 Oh. That's a very nice beat. I'll tell you, this one surprises me a bit. You get the classic V malt back, but when you first get it in your mouth, it's kind of got this weird flavor combination where you start picking up all these little things in the background and it's hard to pinpoint. After the first second that you swallow, it starts to open up. First thing you get is that malt backbone, then that immediately gets out of the way and it starts to open up to a slightly citrus character. Um, I am guessing, traditionally, this style is brewed often with orange or lemon peel. I'm guessing, let me see if they mention anything on the label. Um, fresh citrus peel and uh, use specifically German mandarina hops in case you're curious. Um, so yeah, that citrus does come through. Tastes like predominantly orange. It could be a mix of orange and lemon or even lime or some other citrus grapefruit. There's many from which to choose. But that comes through. Then you start to get this nice clovey quality about it, which is again quite common in Evite. Um, these beers to me, bear a lot of striking similarities to German Hefeweizens, only they have other ingredients put in the beer. As we know, Germans are bound by the Deutsche Streinheitsgebot, the beer uh, German beer purity law, which dictates water, barley, yeast, hops, only four ingredients. They can't add uh, coriander, clove, orange peel, anything like that. So all the flavors that come through are based on their base ingredients. But this has been brewed with orange peel. It probably has um, some other additives in it. Coriander would be common. Very similarly related styles, but this has a bit more depth of flavor and a bit more variation in it. The body is quite heavy for a Vite. 6.66%, I'm not surprised, but this is easily medium heavy. Mouthfeel. It's got a little viscosity to it, which you don't normally get in a Vite, but again, this has a higher ABV than average. Um, so I'm not holding it against it. It's appropriate for the ABV. The finish, um, really after all those flavors find to open up and fully develop and uh, expose themselves, once it hits the apex of that, it's, it's a beautiful balance and it's perfectly even. You get even mix of malt, a nice mix of what tastes like clove, and citrus and that's the dominant flavors and they really linger around quite a long time this has quite a long finish for a Vite. Um, but again more fermentables more backbone to it i'm not surprised uh, this is a very good beer it's very well balanced and i am pleasantly surprised by this one um, i'm going to take my time and sip on this come up with my scores and when we come back we will get to the westbrook brewings beer to drink when it's hot outside the adjunct lager brewed with corn and key lime at 4.5% ABV. Okay, moving on to our second beer of today's review. We are moving on to Westbrook Brewing's Beer to Drink When It's Hot Outside, which is wholly appropriate as it is indeed hot outside. Uh, this is an adjunct lager brewed with corn and key lime puree, 4.5% ABV out of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Um, can art, uh, nothing really so to speak. They have an umbrella and a sun and some sunglasses. It, you know, not that much that's that interesting. So let's just go ahead and get this cracked and get this poured in. I expect this will be quite light in appearance. And indeed it is. Much like most adjunct bloggers. All right. Yes, indeed, a very, very light, pale yellow straw color. Indeed, that is uh, pretty much exactly what I expected. It's also quite effervescent. I did expect that as well. Though, uh, to be honest, the size of the carbonation that is rising um, 
is only a tiny mix of super fine bubbles, but predominantly kind of medium. So this head is not going to retain for that long. Indeed, I can see it's collapsing quite quickly. Um, let's give it a sniff here. Hmm, it smells very light, it smells very refreshing, uh, a little bit malty, and you can hands down smell the key lime in this beer. Um, I kind of have an idea of what to expect on the first sip. I expect it's going to be not dissimilar to a typical adjunct American lager. Uh, you could even think big box, because that's what they are. Uh, but with the addition of the lime, I think it's going to add this nice, bright uh, freshness that goes along with what will most likely be a really clean, crisp uh, flavor profile and finish. But uh, let's just jump in. Mmm. Mmm. Yep. That's quite nice. I'll tell you, it is um, pretty much what I expected, though the lime actually comes through a lot with a lot more intensity than I anticipated. Um, you can think of any big box American non-craft beer, a light version of any of those, um, a really light version of any of those. Think about that base and then add key lime to it. Uh, that's pretty much what this puts me in mind of. It is not got... Um, a very pronounced flavor to the base beer itself. Outside of the lime, there's really not much flavor-wise, so to speak. A little hint of bitter. Uh, other than that, it's just really clean and crisp. Uh, that is what corn tends to do with beers. Um, it doesn't impart much flavor. It just makes it light and clean and crisp. Uh, it's one of the reasons the Big Box brew with it because I guess that's what the masses want to drink. Uh, not for me, but this is a good twist. Up front, as soon as you get it in your mouth, it's just lime. It's key lime, and it's uh, very nice. It's um, not uh, overtly tart, but the flavor intensity of the key lime comes through. Um, and really from there, it just backs off to that super clean kind of generic flavor profile. There's not much, so to speak. There's just a hint, just the slightest subtle hint of bitter. And that's about the beer. Um, it's not anything that uh, I would typically go for uh, as, oh yeah, let me grab some craft beer and grab something like this. But for what it is and its namesake, beer to drink when it's hot outside, if that's indeed the goal of this beer, I think they succeeded. Uh, this is a fantastic beer for when it's hot outside for all those reasons. It's not heavy, it's not pungent, it doesn't leave um, you know a ton of flavors lingering around the palate, not a ton of bitters. It's just clean and light and refreshing and crisp. That's the name of this beer with the key lime, you know, kind of edge to it. That that's what this is. Body-wise, medium light. It's um, it's a little heavier than you think that it would be for four and a half percent, but it, it's it's a medium light body. Um, Mouthfeel, super creamy, su super creamy, silky, silky creamy, um, much akin to a pilsner. Uh, the finish is very short. Um, there's really, I mean, it just comes on. You get it in your mouth. It's key lime. Then once that gets out of the way after a few seconds, there's just that underlying slight suggestion of bitters and just that lime overtone, and then it's gone. It's, it's a very short finish, but it's very clean. Um, it's not particularly dry though. The finish is not dry. It's uh, got a wetness to it. So it's not like a Pilsner or a Saison or a Goza where it has that kind of dry edge to it. Um, it's, it's got a standard wet roundness to it, albeit truncated. This is a nice beer. Uh, for what it is and what I think they set out to do with it, I think they succeeded. Um, I'm going to take my time uh, sipping on this and enjoying this and cooling down from this uh, hot July day and uh, come up with my scores. When we come back, we will get both beers ranked top to bottom.
Okay, now that we've gotten to enjoy uh, both of these beers, we're gonna get them both ranked. Uh, starting with the gigantic brewing companies, Hellboy, Johann Kraus, this is a Citrus Viet, 6.66% uh, ABV. They are based out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, the aroma on this was very nice. Um, for a Viet, it was significantly more pronounced than average. Um, not as pronounced as some I've had, but it was in the upper range. I, I gave it an eight out of 10. Uh, for the taste, this was an absolute home run for me. Uh, this checked off all the boxes for a Viet. The malt character, uh, the flavors that they put in there and the intensity of them and how they developed, it was just an absolute home run. I loved it. Perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, body on this, this also gets a perfect 10 out of 10. It was textbook Viet. You could not ask for better. Uh, mouthfeel. This was a classic Viet mouthfeel. Uh, really let all of the elements kind of interplay. It's not a super viscous style, but due to the intensity of flavors and how it uh, rolls around the palate, even though it's not viscous, they tend to stick around and really let you keep exploring what goes into the beer. Uh, I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. Um, finish on this one. This was so much longer than your average Viet. I was very, very surprised and pleasantly so because this was such a well done Viet and I mean, I couldn't get enough of it. I was really blown away by how well they did this and uh, a Citrus Viet indeed. They, they absolutely nailed it. Um, I gave it a 10 out of 10. Head and retention. Head and retention on this one was okay. It was uh, above average, but it did collapse a little quicker than I would expect on an average wheat beer, uh, just because they are a wheat based and wheat tends to help with both head formation and retention. Uh, we've talked about this on prior episodes and indeed it is the single best ingredient you could put in beer to help with head formation and retention. Uh, this was above average, but it didn't have as much staying power. Um, I gave it a seven out of 10. Uh, appearance wise, this was textbook Viet. It gets another perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, the balance on this. This was expertly balanced. The malt was perfectly harmonious with the additives that they put in this beer and none of them overshadowed the other. And that to me is the fundamental for what makes a really great beer. If a beer is out of balance, it's going to throw everything else off and uh, make what could otherwise have been an amazing experience not as great. Uh, this absolutely nailed it. The balance was fantastic. It gets a 10 out of 10. Feeling in the intangibles? I absolutely love this beer. Um, I've had a few of these uh, Hellboy releases by Gigantic. Thus far this one is hands down the best one that I've had. This is an excellent, excellent uh, Viet, hands down. If you're a fan of this style, I highly recommend it. I loved it. I gave it a 10 out of 10. And uh, speaking of examples of this style, Again, it's a home run. It gets a 10 out of 10. This is just excellent, excellent, well-crafted beer. That brings the total score on Gigantic Brewing's Hellboy, Johan Kraus, Citrus Viet. It's a mouthful, I know. To a 95 out of 100. So this is a ridiculously high score on a ridiculously, exceptionally well-crafted beer. I loved it. I highly recommend it. I, I really do. Um, I think that you can reasonably readily get your hands on these. Um, I don't think it's a limited run, and uh, I know a lot of people are after them, if for no other reason than the uh, original Mike Mignola bottle art, which admittedly is awesome, but uh, well worth seeking. Uh, moving on to beer number two. This is Westbrook Brewing Company's Beer to Drink When It's Hot Outside. This is an adjunct lager, lager brewed with corn and key lime puree, 4.5% ABV out of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. The aroma on this was nice. It was certainly above average for an adjunct lager, and really it was the lime that did it. Um, is it as pungent as some of the most pungent I've experienced? No, but it was certainly above average. It gets a seven. Um, taste on this one. The taste on this was exactly what I expected for what the beer was, but it was so well done, and they added so much lime in there as a nice flavor base to give more presence to what otherwise is kind of a flat beer style, um, it, it gave it some structure. I really enjoyed it. I gave it a nine out of 10. Uh, Body-wise, body on this was uh, kind of a medium light body. Um, that's right in the range for the style. Uh, I gave it a little higher score because I appreciated it had a little bit more depth, depth 
particularly considering it's only 4.5% ABV. So that extra weight to the body went a long way with me. I give it a nine out of 10. Um, mouthfeel on this. This was the classic expected, super creamy, super fine, uh, bubbled, just mouthfeel uh, rolling around the palate. It was textbook, it gets a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, finish on this. Finish on this was certainly longer than your average adjunct lager, um, especially with fewer fermentables. We're talking lower ABV here. Uh, but that key lime puree was really the key. It helped uh, flavors linger around and the way that it paired with the malt bill and uh, the corn base uh, really gave it more presence and helped it stick. Um, it was certainly above average. I gave it an eight out of 10. Uh, head and retention on this one. I was kind of surprised by this. I expected it to form a Pilsner-like head um, as most adjunct lagers do, uh, but it, it didn't. The effervescence, there were too many medium bubbles in there. It just collapsed way too quickly. It formed okay, but it collapsed way too quickly and was gone long before I got a few sips into the beer. I just gave it high end of average. I gave it a six. Appearance-wise, this was a textbook uh, adjunct lager. I mean, that, that's what they look like. This maybe you could even make an argument was on the lighter end, but certainly well within range. I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. Um, balance on this. This was a very well balanced beer. Um, adding in the key lime to this beer base was an absolute genius move. And it certainly, the base beer style is one that I would go to on a hot summer day, um, certainly. Adding in the key lime just added this extra special character to me. And the way that they balanced that with the base beer, I thought they did a very, very good job. For me personally, I could have used even more of it, um, but it, it didn't drown out the base beer, uh, but I thought they did a great job. It, it gets above average, it gets an eight out of 10. Feeling in the intangible, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I would have liked the head to have formed and held a little bit longer, and I would have liked a little more key lime. I mean, if you're gonna put it in there and use this beer style as the base, um, may as well just make it as present as possible. It added such depth to this beer. I just found myself craving more of it, um, but I still really uh, enjoyed the beer. I gave it an eight out of 10. Uh, finally, as an example of the style, this is not a style of beer that I typically go for. Um, I drink them once in a while. This I thought was a very, very well done example of what you can and potentially even should do with this beer style. Uh, corn and beer, uh, is one of the ingredients that's used by big box, mass market, non-craft American brewers, um, because A, it's cheap, and it does do different effects with the beer. It makes it very light, makes it very clean, and that's a good base. And this, as an example of the style, pulled that off, and then they added the lime to it. I just would have liked a little more lime if you're gonna make a flavored version of it. May as well just, just really let it sing. Um, as it were, well above average. I gave it a nine out of 10. That brings the total score of West Brooks Brewing, uh, beer to drink when it's hot outside, to an 84 out of 100. Um, certainly a very, very good score uh, indeed, well above average, well worth seeking. And I think that both of these made absolutely fantastic hot weather beers. Um, I didn't regret my decision grabbing either of them on this very, very hot July day. Uh, nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, that's today's review. As always, I sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Um, please don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Uh, that'll keep our uh, videos in your feed so you won't lose us. Helps others find us. Uh, like if you enjoyed the content. That also helps our, our channel and other find our content. Uh, please share your thoughts, feelings, opinions, questions, anything you want to throw at me in the comments. I do want to hear from you. Uh, lastly, if you want to keep in the loop when our videos go live, just click the notification bell icon that is right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, folks, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.